Everybody say, let's get it. Let's get it. All right, my name is Chico Akua, and I'm going to be talking about mathematical mastery from ancient Africa to urban America. I want to bring you greetings from the Teacher Transformation Institute, where we use standards-based research-driven and culturally relevant instructional strategies to increase student achievement. Now, as we get into this concept of mathematical mastery coming out of ancient Africa, uh, Dr. Samori Kamara asks a question of us, and the question is simple. Have you ever been on social media and somebody tagged you in a picture, you clicked on it, only to find out that you weren't in the picture? Let me see a show of hands. That's what's going on in our classrooms today. And I want to tell you, what is the origin of mathematics? Do our children see themselves as producers of mathematical mastery? And so whether we're talking about going all the way back over 20,000 years to the, the discovery of the Ashango bone, which is a tool that was discovered in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, or whether we're going back to the Ams Mathematics Papyrus, which is the oldest mathematics textbook coming out of the Nile Valley of Africa, dealing with uh, algebra, trigonometry, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, square root area, circumference, and volume, and so much more. Or whether we're talking about the African father of medicine and mathematics, Imhotep, who was a multidisciplinary genius who introduced the world through his writings and through his research. These are resources that our children have no idea about, and they don't see themselves in the picture of mathematical mastery. I travel all over the world doing primary research, pulling together the pieces of this puzzle to show our children a picture of themselves that they oftentimes don't find in today's public schools. But today and tomorrow in my presentation, we're going to be dispelling the myths. Myths like the Great Pyramids were built by aliens. Come on, how many of y'all have heard that before, right? OK. Or that it was built through slave labor. No, we have the documents to demonstrate who worked on it. We can talk about the fact that they were covered in polished white limestone with a capstone made of pure gold. What kind of educational system did these Africans, these ancient Africans, have to have to produce that kind of meticulous mathematical mastery? Whether we go back to the Alms Mathematics Papyrus and problem number 56, where we see these Africans working on how to determine and discover the slope of a pyramid. Of a pyramid. There's all sorts of different primary research data. We can also look at the majesty of the Moors and the African influence in early Europe and the way that these Africans lifted Europe out of the Dark Ages with their science, technology, engineering, and mathematical mastery. And so as we look at these different things, then we can go to West Africa, look at the University of San Pere at Timbuktu, where scholars from all over the world came. Now, when I was growing up, we had a saying, man, I knock you all the way to Timbuktu. I didn't know that was a place, <laughs> much less one of the great learning centers of the world, where African scholars and scholars from all over Africa and all over Europe and all over Asia came to study at the feet of master teachers. And there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of these manuscripts that are still in existence. And then Dr. Renoko Rashidi, who talks about global African presence, demonstrates how through migration patterns around the globe, these Africans took their knowledge and their expertise everywhere that they traveled and influenced culture all over the world. Again, this is a picture of the possibilities that many of our children don't get these days. They don't see their, their own personal cultural connection with mathematical mastery. And we as their teachers must be able to show them and to demonstrate that it belongs to them. For the first time in the history of the United States of America, over 50% of the public school population will be children of color. Are we prepared to engage them on their level? You see, we can ask questions. Was there a time when African people led the world in mathematical mastery, scientific innovation, literary production, and wealth creation? We can examine these questions, but are we prepared to engage the children on their level when, in fact, they now are the ones that are the majority of the public school population? And we understand that when we can relate to them in this way, they will be much more receptive to what we have to teach. As I mentioned, I travel all over the world in search of these and other gems that I'm prepared to share with you tomorrow. And I look forward to sharing those with you tomorrow. And I believe, as educators, we can change the world if we are first willing to change ourselves. My name is Chika Akua. That's my story. And I'm sticking with it. Thank you.